Okay, uh, as far as how this thing works, basically, it's not terribly complicated. It's just, uh, basically, what happens is the relay that's in the radio comes out down here, and it's tied in. It's tied in. It's actually, it grounds out, basically. It passes ground through. It sends ground via 12 volts over to the relays, depending on what's the way the switches are set. There's two relays, one for the bell, one for the light, as well as two 12-volt uh, solid-state flashers, or just automotive flashers, uh, Tridon, T-R-I-D-O-N, EP27s, I believe they are. Now you have to use solid-state because uh, thermal flashers are current-dependent, and they, the, the rate that they flash is dependent exact on what the load is connected to them. In the case of a relay, these 12 volt relays are just 100 milliamps, so they would flash very fast. They, you know, they're not too terribly expensive, maybe 10 bucks a pop at your local automotive store. Um, 12 volt DC comes in here from a, from a power supply that I have in the basement, and then just regular AC power. I have it set up. I have it set up when it hangs on the wall. That's the DC and that's the AC. I just fished it up through the wall so that it looked nice and pretty, and it looks like it floats on the wall. Regular magnetic mount antenna with a magnet removed, and I just kind of have it. Um, screwed to the top. These screws here are actually what hold it to the wood so that it doesn't fall off the wall. I just had it down to demonstrate. Clock's uh, 120 volts AC, just a regular old clock. The motor has been replaced in the past. I didn't replace it. Um, and uh, and that's, so that's pretty much it overall. Basically, um, the relay activates and it closes, basically brings ground through up to either of these flashers, depending on the way the switches are set. The flashers activate, and they do, you know, they pulse out and turn these relays on and off at a, at a set rate. Again, the flashers have to be solid state. They can't be uh, thermal, otherwise it won't work correctly because of the current draw of the relays. So, in general, that's basically how it works. Um, I can set it off manually by using the pull station. Again, the pull station isn't really necessary. It was mainly just kind of for look and feel. Um, but when it's activated, you can... Um, The switches will activate either one or the other, so you can have either none, bell, or light. I'll have the light on just so we can hear what's going on. <clears throat> you can hear the flasher going. Again, it's a solid state flasher, so it's just all it's doing is activating on and off and turning the light relay on and off at a set rate. Um, same thing happens. The, um, the pull station is actually tied right into the same ground as the radio relay so either way you know whichever one gets closed it activates the system uh, again the relay and the radio goes off for four seconds was uh, what we kind of arrived at as far as the uh, as the as the correct amount of time the main reason for that like I said was once the tones go out and the and the thing activates you want to be able to hear the call as it comes out over the radio and usually takes four or five maybe six seconds depending on the type of call um, for the tones to drop, then once it's done, they broadcast the call. Uh, we also have another type of alerting here. We have a long tone alert as well for uh, town-wide fire um, alarms of fire, and um, this will activate on those as well. I haven't tested that yet, but according to the documentation on the relay, it should work. Uh, they do a test on that every Saturday night, so I haven't, and we haven't had any calls of, of that nature. They're uncommon, so that's pretty much how it works in a nutshell. Um, that's it. Thanks.